All right, guys. So I'm going to be talking about Star Wars: Crimson Rain. This is the uh, new. This was the new Star Wars event that it was the sequel to War of the Bounty Hunters, and this was hyped up as like the big, like the big second part, a second act of the trilogy of Charles Soule's Star Wars events. The third one with the upcoming uh, Hidden Empire. Now, for reference, um, what happened in War of the Bounty Hunters, because it's been a while since uh, that's been out, um, in, during the War of the Bounty Hunters, the Crimson Dawn had basically announced itself, led by Kira from the Solo movie, that they were going to go to war with the Empire, and specifically the Sith, it's Vader and Palpatine, to free the galaxy of its control. And, yeah... That was where it left off, and they had united with several, uh, they had, like, agents in the Empire, they had, like, uh, all these little, like, their tendrils were, like, everywhere, like, Hydra, and, yeah, it was, looked like, and the Empire was gearing up to go to war with the Crimson Dawn, it was gonna be a big, it, they were treating it as, like, a big deal. It'd be a big deal in the tie-ins, because nothing fucking happens in this goddamn comic. This event, War of the Bounty Hunters, at least something was going on, and at least they wanted to do an event to showcase Book of Bo to do Book of Boba Fett. So they had Va they had Boba Fett as the main protagonist, the main protagonist of the story, even though the War of the Bounty Hunters occurred in other books. Here, the Crimson Rain happens in other books because literally three of the five issues is all about backstory for characters that don't mean anything in the long run. Also, I'm really sorry, but Kira is not interesting as an antagonist. She is, like, it's cool that we're, like, acknowledging the Han Solo movie. It is cool that we're acknowledging that story. But really, there's nothing here. Like, there's literally... She is not interesting as a foil to, uh, to Darth Vader and Palpatine. Um... Yeah, she's dis she's not interesting, and also her message is kind of mixed. Like she wants to free the galaxy from the Empire, but also wants to plunge it into chaos. I'm like, that's what the Sith do. So you're just doing what the Sith are doing, but you're doing the same thing. I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Also, they've like teamed up with the Knights of Ren, who yeah, that's a thing in this timeline because this is set in between. Empire and Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and basically it's all just like one big, like, I don't know, it is just a comic where three of the five issues are just backstory and set up for stuff you want to see in the tie-ins. It's not, like, that's not how you do an event, at least in War of the Bounty Hunters, the main story like it gave in the main story it gave you everything else and the tie-ins like supplemented what happened in the others here it's just if you want to see all the cool shit go read the tie-ins because all we're going to do is focus on characters that you don't care about aside from two uh, from two issues which one is the knights of ren breaking into into fortress vader and having a brief conflict with vader which amounts to really nothing, which amounts to them getting a key for a hidden empire, and also, like, the fifth issue is them finding some relic, and uh, Kira having her big, this is my hidden empire, choke on it. And I'm like, she is so not interesting as a main antagonist. Um, and the Knights of Ren are not, like, if you thought the Knights of Ren were kind of interest, like, an interesting concept in, uh, in the sequel trilogy, <laughs> this tells you to get fucked. Because really, the Knights of Ren are just a bunch of dark side users who are like a biker gang. That's all they are, is just a biker gang with dark side powers, and that's really it. And they're just uh, not even, like they're so low on the goddamn list that Palpatine has barely even acknowledged their existence. Like they even say like Palpatine for the longest time has like not even acknowledged us as a threat. So this is our chance to make sure that we are a threat to him, to show that we are a threat to him. And, yeah. I'm like, this is, this? What, these were the, bi the big characters Kylo Ren wanted to, like, this is the T, the guys that would one day, um, like, these are the guys that would one day be, um, Kylo Ren would turn against the Jedi Order 4 to become the master of? These guys? These douchebags? They're all also really stupid. Even their leader is more like a, is more like a just a 
thug who's like, a, he's basically like the jock quarterback with a red lightsaber. Um, there's nothing here that happens that, you know, do you want to see what happens with um, Vader investigating the assassination of several guards, not knowing that Ochi, who is also from the sequel trilogy, who kills Rey's parents, um, do you want to see what happens there? Well, go read the Vader tie-in. Do you want to see this relic that um, this character called the Archivist, who's also looking for Yoda, um, ha uh, what that's from? Go check out the Afra tie-in, because this thing is literally just sh uh, set up for tie-ins. And I know, tie-ins to comics can sometimes be important to the main story, but for the most part, most of Marvel events these days don't really depend on tie-ins. They're more to supplement the main story because they can tell the story without needing something you to do homework to read other books and spend more money. Ugh. So, yeah, also Crimson Dawn, Akira is, like I've said multiple times, Kira is just not interesting as a villain. Like, I'm like... Every time she's so, the only thing that is interesting is this leader of this group called the this uh, group of thugs called the orphans, who their leader is actually the daughter of a of a pair of um, bounty hunters who tried to kill Vader in Charles Soule's Darth Vader Dark Lord of the Sith comic, which I kind of like. Um, so it was a nice callback to his to, to his early run, and I do like. There is another scene where this character called the Archivist is basically talking about. Um, uh, this whole thing about how the Empire, like, suppressed the Jedi legacy so fast, but that's really it. There's real also this character named Deathstick, who's a Night Sister. I'm like, how many Night Sisters survived? Because it seems like a good number of them survived Grievous' uh, massacre on the planet. So, alright, whatever. All in all, I am... Um, I just read this because this is going to be important to the... Because I read the Vader comics every time they come out and trade, so this was kind of important. It wasn't like... It was kind of funny because I got the War of the Bounty Hunters Vader tie-in volume um, first, and then later I got War of the Bounty Hunters. So this I got first, so now I'll, I'll read that and probably enjoy the Vader tie-in way more than this garbage. And I know I'm going to have to read The Hidden Empire because that's going to be tied in with the Vader comics. Because, I, if anything, I will read the Darth Vader books. But yeah, so there you go, guys. That is Star Wars Crimson Reign. I mean, if you're a Star Wars completionist, give, you'll have to read this. But yeah, this is not like the big, exciting, like, Kira and the Knights of Ren team up to take on the Empire and find the secrets of the Sith like it was billed as. This is nothing. This is nothing total nothing and yeah, i spent like oh, like 16 it was like 16.99 if it was uh, like yeah i feel still feel like i spent too much on this fucking shit Ugh. anyway so there's my review hope y'all enjoyed this uh check out my patreon for exclusive content other than that i'm mr multiverse i'll see you next time in the multiverse